and then taking off the lid and it's just gone. Psh. That is how I feel about the show today. Genuinely, I am like a bottle of pop fizzing over with the excitement of the show. I have got some brand new treats and goodies for you. We have got items that sold out in the past like that. 
Zoom! See ya! And we've managed to get them back in. I have got all that glitters with wonderful things such as your cosmic shimmers. I put up a little bit of that on my Instagram stories. If you have a little nosy, I've picked two of my favourites. We've got the likes of your pixie sparkles and so much more. We've also got beautiful layering texture stamps for you. We're going to be demoing with these. Well, I say we, I'm not. I'm going to stand here in awe. The lovely lady joining me today, it's Jan! Hi, Jan. Hi, Becky. I wondered where we were going with the pot bottle then. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I've got hands full of these. You love them last time we brought them to you and literally bought us all out. So we've ordered them back in. We've got lots of, we've got lots of stock in for you this afternoon. I'm going to be showing you what to do with the pixie sparkles, with the chalk paints, with the metallic polishers, the texture, you name it. I've got bundles of them going on. So I've got demos lined up with using all of them across the board. So I hope you can stay tuned. And the wonderful thing is you can tell that Jan means business because she's got on her apron. It's all <laughs> <laughs> about the mixed medium today we are going to be bringing to you so much texture so much dynamism and one of the main items we're going to be working with is the incredible layering texture stamp collection now in this you're going to be getting 51 elements in total and you are going to be getting selections in here of your fabulous stamps now maybe you're brand new to us and you're thinking hey up what what are these about they're going to create lovely textures and details so that you can use them when you're making cards. Maybe you've got loads of photos knocking around or they're just on your phone and you've printed them off and you want to do a photo book. These are perfect for that too. And the thing is that they're photopolymer, which means that they are flexible, but it also means that they give you a really crisp finish. Um, they're also translucent, well, they're transparent, so you can always see where you're stamping. When I started stamping, I was always using the wooden blocks and I could never see what I was doing because obviously wood's opaque. These make your life so much easier. They're crisp, they're reusable, and they are an absolute bargain. Uh, we sounded a bit like a sheep then, bargain. We are bringing to you a should-be deal of nearly £50, 47.94 to be precise. Actually today though, 39.95. But if you're brand, brand new, guess what? You get 20% off your first order and a bonus 250 points. Now, if you're thinking, hang on, what are points? Do not worry. It's all to do with our Club Inspire. Basically, the more points you save, the more money you save. And of course, if you're platinum as well, you're getting that extra 20% off. So, 39.95, already a fantastic saving, over 15% on that great item. But actually, you can get it with the 20% off for just £31.96 or $39.80. So do feel free to seize the moment on these because we are cracking with them all right now, aren't we, Jan? I'm going to dip in and out of those sort of over the course of the afternoon, Becky, because they're so versatile that they will literally go. You'll, you'll find yourself reaching for them for lots of your projects. But we, we're doing a masterclass this afternoon, but I'm always aware that there may be new people watching. So I thought I'll keep it fairly low key for the first demo and then we'll build it as we go through the show towards the end. You know me, I'm going to have messy fingers by the end of it. I always do. <laughs> so I'm just going to start out. We've got some of the layering stencils on the show today. So you'll find those on the website um, but I'm not going to use them in the traditional way you know me I never do anything in the traditional way do I <laughs> so these are actually intended to layer up to make a design and I've chosen the pretty peonies which is a beautiful collection in its own right so you would literally stencil through the flowers and then you would add some leaves to it and then we've got a background to go with it so that you're getting this kind of effect okay mm -hmm. but like I said I very rarely do anything according to the packet so I'm going to do something different and all I want today is this background out of here these again are really versatile the other two stencils are mainly about creating the design but I'm going to pop those to one side this afternoon and I actually want just the background one and each one of these sets has got a different background in it so not that you can see it let me just find a bit of uh, card again so that you can have a better look there we go look so you can see this has just got a lovely little sprig of flowers and I'm going to use that as part of my design so what I'm going to bring in first of all from the cosmic shimmer range is a couple and these are one of my favorites I absolutely adore these this is the matte chalk polish and if I turn them around this hang on bless Charlotte she's trying to follow me and I've I just spun them round look 
So yeah, we've got matte chalk polish. Now, if you haven't come across this before, it's a water-based medium and it dries with a really nice chalky finish. So it's great for those sort of shabby chic projects and things like that. We've got a range of colours on the show today, but for this one, I'm going to actually use the wisteria, which is the lilac -y one, and sky blue. I'm going to use both of these together. So before I get into the demo, I'm actually just going to show you these on a piece of scrap card uh, just to show you what they actually look like. So when you get them home, they've got a screw top on and all that gorgeous goodness is inside there. And it almost looks like a mousse in there, but also in your pot, incorporated into the pot. And I just use both my thumbs on the front of here and push. You actually get your applicator come with it. So you don't have to worry about whether you've got a clean applicator, whether it's got a different colour, whether it's going to contaminate. You get one of these with each pot. So it literally stays with the pot. So I tend to click that out. I'm going to take the lid off. And then when you first open these, obviously this will be clean when you first get it. And the instructions on the, uh, on the bottle say to just wash it under the tap with a little bit of soapy water, just to get any kind of residue off it that may have been put there while it's been made. And then once it's been done, you don't need to do that again. And then the idea with this is your sponge. It's a sponge applicator, nice and soft. And literally this is going to pick up your product. So we're going to go in, to the pot and I'm just using the edge of the pot to sort of scrape off any excess so I'm gathering it up and then scraping it off because you don't need a lot of product and then literally I'm going to do a little bit of the blue and a little bit of the lilac just to show you what I mean and you get a really nice coverage okay so that's the blue one that's and gorgeous. I'm going to come back to this and it dries relatively quickly. So you've got, you can see there, you've got that beautiful pale blue. Once it's yeah. dry, you've got that lovely chalky finish on it. And I'm going to show you the lilac one as well. And then on my project, I'm going to use a combination of both. If you do want to grab that sky blue, grab it ASAP. 25% of the stock has gone, 25% gone already. Remember, we brought it back in, sold out all of these ones super quick last time. So do be they quick. They did, yeah. So don't wait. If you didn't get them last time, don't wait because they did just literally disappear on us last time we brought these to you. The wisteria, 33% of the wow. stock gone. 33% gone, third of the stock. So all I'm doing is literally just dragging that sponge applicator over the card stock. And you can see it's covered. This is white stamping card and it's literally covered that beautifully looks great those okay. colors together and that you would leave that to actually dry but you can see the blue one now you can see where this one's shimmering a little bit that's still damp mm. but the blue one's dry now and it's got that gorgeous chalk mm. finish on it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do exactly the same piece but i'm going to apply it slightly differently so what i want to do is bring in the blue and i want to create the beginnings of my background so again just dragging it out of that tub onto my applicator and this time let me just get rid of the lilac so that I don't contaminate there I'm just going to bring it in sort of from the edge and I want that kind of wispy I don't want a full coverage because I want to blend the two colors so we're going to go sort of just literally dragging it and covering areas of it you can see there where we've got let me just grab a piece of tissue so that I don't take the edge off it and literally that's that's all I want to do with the blue so I'm going to pop that one back in its container pop the lid back on it does look brilliant that because the blank space looks like clouds it does it would Bad. make a really nice sky wouldn't it yeah it would be brilliant for that and then I'm going to bring the lilac and I want to try and so my aim is to sort of try and fill the gaps with the lilac but it's not you know there's no exact science so if it you know if it hits some of the blue it's going to blend nicely but I want to sort of create a little bit of both colours so I'm just lightly brushing this across the cardstock almost oh, keeping that wispy so I want to put a picture of a unicorn on it because it yes. looks like magic those it's colours amazing. are perfect they really they? are yeah so that's literally, you know, if it goes over the blue, it doesn't matter. But that's literally where I want to get to with it as a background. So I'm going to pop that. Just make sure. And again, a little bit of housekeeping. Make sure that your jars are clean 
because any product around the outside may sort of make the lid stick and I've I'm, I'm saying this because I've done it so I'm talking from experience and then your little sponge just you hear it click back into the top mm -hmm. Oops, get it straight Jan it clicks back into the top and it's all secure ready for next time right. so that's the two chalk ones and then this is actually dry now so it literally I mean I know we're under the studio lights here but you know it does dry literally within minutes I would say a couple of minutes or so and you're done okay that's and we're going to work over the top of that now I'm going to bring that stencil back in and we're going to work over the top of it and I'm going to bring in now it's sort of partner in crime now this one is a very similar product but it's can you see the shimmer in the pot? Yes. If I hold them next to each other, you can see the chalky one that I've just been using here. This one's metallic pearl. Absolutely gorgeous. So a very similar product brought to you in the same way, same applicator, but it's got a metallic finish on it. And we're going to go over the top of what we've already done with the metallic. So again, if you have a look in here, just they're just just dreamy yeah. just looking at them you just I just want to stick my finger in it you know me <laughs> so we've actually got Heather in this one so I'm literally going to put my stencil at an angle and I'm going to take a little bit of um, low tack tape just so that it doesn't move and I'm going to stick it down at the back because I want to actually put some of this metallic um, paint through onto it onto we're here. already getting so much love for you jan mandy's in saying hello becky jan cc team val saying hi becky and jan love working with stencils hope to learn some new tricks rose is in on facebook saying that background is gorgeous um we've got um so many people coming in rebecca's asked a question about the chalk ones yes but i presume it relies on anything how well do these work on other media mdf or wood for example absolutely perfectly i'm going to do some on MDF later in the show so if you're able to stay watching you'll see that in action later if you're not able to stay watching don't forget you can re-watch our shows as many times as you wish on your chosen platform so yeah I'm going to use it and it will go direct you can either prep your MDF with gesso which we've also got on the show and I will talk about that later when I do the demo or it is strong enough to go straight onto the MDF and cover it we just need a couple of coats Fab. so I tend to do a layer of gesso to save my polish and just do one layer of polish rather than doing two layers of the polish and using more product depends how you feel about it so all I've done then as I've just taken this is a little bit of cut what we call cut and dry foam um, so it's actually got quite a firm surface on one side and a soft on the other you could just as easily use your sponge applicators uh, you could use the little excuse me eating my own hair oh, um, those little sponge egg applicators would work as well anything like that that's soft uh, rather than using this one because I don't I want a bit more control rather than the whole area of this one so again I'm going to use it to just take a little bit of that product out here and this time I'm going to dab the excess onto my mat so that I've not I don't want to overload it and it and push it under the stencil so a little bit at a time and literally pounce through that stencil with it and I'm going straight over the top of the chalk paint so this is going to give me like another layer and you know when I'm talking mixed media I'm always talking about building up the layers yes. but I wanted to keep this one quite simple uh, we're not going to go too mad with this one just to show you that you can incorporate even though we think of these products as mixed media products you can incorporate them I'm actually going to make a card with this one this is the background it's going to be the background for just a simple uh, card so you know these products will work in all your uh, different projects I'm going to do a scrapbook page using some of the products later on uh, I've brought some artist trading cards to show you as well if you haven't come across those so lots of different ideas that you can use I know you loved these products last time we bought them and I wanted to try and show you as many different ways as possible to use them in your projects so that's my job and Jan am I right in saying that on the 29th you're going to be doing something special with a lot of today's products. I certainly am. I'm very excited about this, Becky. I've not started it yet. I'm waiting while I get home today. But I have got a craft along next Thursday. 
uh, and it's going to be using some of the Cosmic Shimmer products. Yay! So if you've bought some of these products, and again, you know, we always talk about, we give you a list of what you will need, but if you haven't got the right colour, you can always substitute it for something that you've got. Uh, but yeah, I'm not quite sure what it's going to be yet. I've got a couple of ideas I want to have a play with, but we're actually going to do a craft along. So get your aprons out, those of you, those Platinum members that have got your aprons at the ready, and you can come and craft along. And I'm going to try and get our Ben involved as well, because he likes a little craft along when I'm here. So uh, yes, we'll see what we can come up with, but that Brilliant. will be three o'clock next Thursday, next Thursday here in the UK. Yeah. So grab your Cosmic Shimmer treats whilst we've got Ooh, them, because yep. some of them are so low in stock now. Right, so I'm just going to take that away. And then Whoa! the product that's on here, literally, it will come off under the tap with a little bit of soapy water. I'm just going to leave it to dry on here. It won't damage your stencil. But once you get some warm water and a little bit of soap on it, it will literally, I just rub it between my fingers to clean it off. All right, but if I show you the top that of this now, amazing. let's oh, just get rid of the... Uh, but yeah, it's brought another... And I like mixing the elements because we started off with that lovely matte finish but if mm. i tip this into the light look how that oh, one's got that gorgeous incredible. metallic shimmer to it that juxtaposition makes it really eye-catching so what i want to do I've, I've sort of done it to uh, what, what you've just said <laughs> 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 mine's a jaunty angle what did you say a juxtaposition yes yeah. Ooh. So I've done it that way. And literally, the, the one that I've done at home is pretty much identical. I'm just going to jump to this one. The metallic one does take a little bit longer to dry. Now, if you're impatient like I am, you can always take your heat tool to it and dry it off, which is what I tend to. But I had prepped it at home, and it is virtually the same. So I'm going to swap to this one that's already dry. And literally, build this up now. We'll just get rid of a bit of the... Uh, the mess off here and all the products that I've used so far are all water-based so I've just used them out of the pot as they're intended but you can water these down to use them as a paint and colour with them and uh, the lady that's just asked about the MDF they will go straight over the MDF so you can sort of start taking them into that level uh, they're very very good natured and because they are water-based they'll play nicely with other products so for example if you've got white gesso you could add a bit of that beautiful uh, um, metallic gilding polish to it and change your boring white gesso into a metallic paint wow. so there's lots of different ways of doing it when we get to play with the pixie sparkles later they are great in your shaving foam technique yes. which is something that I wanted to try and uh, bring along on one of the shows as well uh, so yeah if you, if you do the shaving foam and put, put the pixies in and spray them with water they just burst into life in there so uh, yeah, so I've just created a mat and layer for my card. As I say, keep, keeping this one relatively simple. And then on here, I've taken a piece of ribbon out of my stash, which we're going to pop on the back there. So I'm just going to use a little bit of the tape. Okay. And then literally just bring this across where that line joined in. So again, pop that one on the back there. Whoops, it'd be better if we had it going the right way. So I just want to bring that along the line of there and cut off that excess that we've got on the back. And then this one is going to go on the top of my mats and layers. So all I've done is matted a little bit of our textured cardstock that matched the colour scheme. This is just a piece of plain white stamping card because I wanted to set this off from the background i've just left a really tiny little border just so that it separates it from that lilac background card so we can put our double-sided tape on the back and then i've stamped out a little sentiment that i had usually pick up whatever's hanging around on my desk at the time <laughs> and we're going to pop that one on the front there keep it nice and simple just to show those products off at their very best and then literally I've got a just for you and that's why I've just left that corner oh. without so much busy detail yes. on so again just a couple of little pads on the back of there and then we're going to pop that one in that corner so nice and straightforward to start off but that was using a mixture of those gorgeous chalk polishers with the metallic gilding polish as well so if I turn you that one round now you can just see nice and straightforward to get us started this afternoon 
That really is stunning. Jan, thank you so much for showing us that. Do not forget that those products you've got your hands on, you have the chance to get in today's show. And remember, that's make one of the make of the day. If you want to recreate that, let me tell you some of the products used in that wonderful design. So the matte polish that is in the sky blue, it is so, so, so popular. Got over a third of the stock gone on that one already. We then had the wisteria, the gentle lavender colour. We had a third of the stock gone before. Of course, there's more than that gone now. And I've got the cosmic shimmer. Now, the shimmers have been popular. So if you do want to seize them, it's 50 mil on them. £5.75 or 9.99. Guess what? 40% of that gone. If you do love the stencil that Jana's used, you were able to get it in a bundle. We were very excited. We went live, the whole bundle went. You can still get that stencil by itself though. Head on over to our website. And don't forget, if you are making a long at home, maybe you've got something that's similar to these, maybe you managed to get some of the cosmic sparkles, etc. Last time, send in your pictures on our socials. We love seeing them. So do feel free to share. Do you fancy adding a little bit of layering and texturing with your stampers? Well, then this is a brilliant way to do it. We have got for you here a real wealth of treasures and treats. They are um, a big selection that we're getting. So I'm bringing to you your layering texturing stamps as I said before, 51 elements total. And the, there are so many different ones that you get that I think are really all year round. These aren't kind of holiday dependent. So we've got a perfect one for now. If you are planning on safely getting out, maybe meeting some of your friends in a pub garden soon, but if not, the Missing You collection. These ones, similar actually to the stamps that Craig was using um, on the wake up call when he made the little stationary carrier. So these are great for that. We've also in here got for you your on your special day. Earlier on in the craft vault, we did the wonderful church. How great would these be for the church, especially with that sort of fleur de lis feel to it. We're then bringing to you your special friend. And I think we've all got a few very special friends that we're really thinking of at the moment. This is a great one for that. Got a touch of the Bridgerton about it, that one, I think. Then we're bringing you a just a note. Can you think of any times where you might be inspired by nature? Yeah, me too. It's all of the time, right? Well, this is perfect for it. You've got knots of wood here. You've got elements that look like driftwood. You've got that beautiful leaf, which, you know, dependent on how you colour it, could be an autumnal leaf fallen to the floor or a bright, fresh new sprig. Loads going on in there, including, of course, your sentiments. Then I've got for you your, your ace. Oh, I think this one's fabulous. Great for anyone who does love maybe, uh, you know, your cards. Um, as in playing cards, maybe someone who loves playing poker, going to casinos, someone who's going to Vegas, or just someone who you think is ace. A great collection on there. And last but by no means least, you've got your thanks here. Beautiful flowers. They would go great with my creative cravings later because I've got the, um, you know, the flowers to each month. These would go great with that as little additions. And of course, you've got your thanks on there. So all of those are in together, which is how you get your best saving. You're already saving over 15%, but of course, if you have got your platinum or your brand new today, you're getting that extra 20% off, taking them down to £31.96 or $39.80. These are going to take your crafting to another level. And we've got the wonderful Jan getting ready to craft up more of a storm. Oh, I've, I've actually got my letter to you, Becky, because this one is never going to be far from my desk. I absolutely, the script in here is so useful. A, for making your backgrounds. B, just going to use it sort of without the block again today. You've seen me do this before where we just have a touch of stamping just to create a suggestion that there's something there. Yeah. And then we're going to be using elements from here as well. The little dots on here, the wavy bits, all sorts, just to add some detail. And I'm going to use the stencil we've also got on the show the uh, background stencil and focal stamps as well so I'm actually going to be using the stencil out of this set to add some detail and I just want to 
Let me just pull that one out for you. Whilst you are grabbing that out, I did actually have a message in just in from Gilmore. What stencil did you use to make the card? The first one was out of that layering set, uh, which was the perfect... Uh, pr pretty peonies, not perfect. Pretty peonies. pretty peonies. It's a set of three stencils, so you get all the layers, but I just use the background one. Perfect. But any of your stencils will work. If you've got the big 12 by 12s, you know, you don't have to do a 12 by 12 project. You know, if you've bought those big ones, use them on your, you know, on your cards. It doesn't have to be. Just because the stencil starts out that big doesn't mean your project That's has great. to be that big. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's a 7 99 in the UK, Gilmore, if you do want it. It's by itself online because the bundle sold out so i'm sorry about that right so as i say we're going to use that stent and i want this sort of lovely trellis uh, part that we're going to use and i'm going to just do a very very tiny project this time now craig touched on this a little while ago and he talked about artist trading cards and i know i was watching in one of his wake-up calls and he did a gorgeous demo with the um in fact i'm not sure if it wasn't these stamps that he was using um but basically these are little tiny mini pieces of art so again if you're just starting out it's a nice little size to work on rather than having something that's bigger and a little bit daunting so traditionally they measure three and a half inches by two and a half inches and it is a set size and they actually derive from the collecting you know sort of the um the cards the packs of cards that you can collect not playing cards as such oh, but you know on. like the yes and top trumps and things like yeah, that yeah. that kind of thing yeah so three and a half inches by two and a half and you can use them portrait or landscape and the idea is is that you make your little pieces of art and then on the back you write what who, who it's made by what it is what you've used and what number you know maybe you've made more than one of them and then you actually trade them with your friends and this was very big so i'm good, probably going back about 10 years or so now um i used to get involved in this i've got folders full of these from my crafty friends at home so you make one your friend makes one and then you exchange them you so where the trading bit comes from uh, so a little bit like you said becky with the pokemon trading cards that kind of thing uh, but then that you know we had issues with the postage going up and then people were a little bit more sort of concerned about putting things through the mail so what i've done is i've taken three pieces of watercolor card as my base we're just going to work on one of them because i've actually got the others ready but i'm going to show you how i arrive from a piece of blank white card to where i'm going to end up with so again we're going to apply lots of different things to it the first thing is just simply going to be some ink now we've not got specific ink inks on the show today but they're always on our website and this is the pigment one so i'm using the fuchsia which is the middle pink out of the pigment inks and i'm literally going to squidge this onto my glass mat if you've not got a glass mat you can do this on a craft mat you can do it on a piece of acetate uh, as long as it's non-porous then you're good in my spritzer bottle i've just got plain good old tap water and i'm going to spritz that to activate that ink and then literally dip my card in it just to pick up some color so this is the first layer we're back to that layering again with uh, sort of touching on mixed media so just keep dipping in there until you've got and I don't want to cover the whole thing. If you can see there, there's still some sort of bits of white yes. in there again. So if you get it pulling in places, you can just dab the edge of it there. And I think that's probably... What I'm going to do is dry it. I've got my little uh, quiet heat tool that makes them all laugh because they don't think I've turned it on. Yeah, you do look like you're just pretending. <laughs> but it is on, honestly. Listen. It yeah, is on. <laughs> that, was just, that was just Jan coming. I've just down melted the, microphone. The, uh, the microphone now. <laughs> <laughs> but once you've actually dried it, the opaque ink will actually layer up so you can actually get some more sort oh, of detail beautiful. over the top of it. Looks like you've really right. zoomed in on a flower petal. It looks fine. Yeah. So again, you know, at home, in fact, we've got a bit more card. Let's just, let's, um, rather than waste my ink, let's just smooch another one in there. Yes, smooch away. Let's go for it, shall we? And just pick up. And you always get Ooh. like a different effect each time you do this, which is what I like about it. And again, you know, if it builds up in places where it looks a bit deep, just give it a blot. All right. And we'll leave that one 
to dry. That okay? looks a bit like and the I am going to take that today. off there. You could do doodles over that and stuff, couldn't you? Is it, what? Sorry. You could do doodling and so much over Ooh, you're it. With, oh. You're with me, Becky. Oh, you're me. with me. <gasps> right, Quick, we're, we're going to add some more to stock. it. I must craft. We're uh, we're going to add some more to it. This is just the very first layer, so I want to make sure it's dry. And then in the gaps here, where I've got some white left, I'm going to bring in those pixie sparkles. Now these are actually magic, it's like magic dust. So you've got a whole bottle full of a powder that literally explodes in colour when you add um, water to it. So let me just show you on a piece of actual white cardstock what I mean. So I'm going to spritz this with a little bit of water. I'm going to tap a bit of this one out, and this is teal. And then when you spray it again, you'll see how that colour just, ex they're like, a bit like fireworks. So you can see how they, they sort of start to work. Now again, watercolour, water, sorry, water-based water product. So if you tapped a little bit out onto your mat and added water, you can paint with it and you get the most, when this is dry, you get the most exquisite sparkle from it. And I'm going to incorporate this in now with our ink. So I'm just going to uh, dab some of that water off just to show you that sparkle when it's dry. And then we're going to pop some of this to mix in with the pink. They're still laughing at my heat tool because it's so quiet. Should I make up the sound effects? <laughs> it is on, honestly. <laughs> they keep telling me to plug it in. <laughs> what I love about this cosmic shimmer that you've got here, the Pixie Sparkles one, is it's it's to do with the size of the micas and you get that yeah it's almost like what, the get, festival yeah. where you throw paint it looks incredible but just look where it's catching the light just oh, honestly i love it it's gorgeous stuff it really oh, is wow. so again lends itself to lots of different backgrounds but what i'm going to do is i'm going to aim for the areas that are not as dense with the pink so i'm going to put some in here where there's a little bit of white okay and I'm gonna pop a bit. I haven't actually wet this piece of card first because I don't want the pink to run too much. So I've literally gone into those areas where there was a gap. And then when we wake it up, just look. And honestly, Magical. I'm gonna start drying it straight away because I don't want too much of it to run. And once it's dry, you'll get that gorgeous sort of shimmer come through which is the mica that comes through in it and there's lots of different colors in this again so you can play mixing them to your heart's content you know it doesn't have to be just the one i've just chosen two there with the ink and the pixie sparkle to make my background all right so i'm just going to dry the rest of it again if it starts pooling just dab the edges dry the back as well and then we're going to start we're going to do a bit more over the top of it i've not finished yet so a few more layers on the top yet, but we do need to make sure that that is dry. Okay, so I'm going to put the lid on my sparkles before I have an accident, because I don't <laughs> want that everywhere. Loads and again, I've used the tiniest, things. tiniest little bit there. You know, this is actually a 30 mil pot, so it's going to last you a long time. You only use a little tiny piece of it. Even when I did this on the bigger piece of cardstock, mm. didn't use much of your product at all. So many people right. saying, this is super fun, Jan. That's in from Katie. Deborah oh. says, I have to try this. Thank you. Betsy saying, this is so cool. But look, just look where that's picking up the light. So you've got the opaqueness of the ink. And then you've got that lovely sparkle coming through with the pixies there. Oh, it looks so amazing. already we've got some interest going on. So we've not finished yet. I'm going to bring the stencil in now and I'm just going to use the back of this as a, a bit of a guide. And what I want to do is just bring a little bit of stenciling down one side and I'm going to bring in some more sparkle now. So this is actually the sparkle texture paste. So this dries with some body to it. So when I bring it through my stencil, you're going to get a raised image of the stencil work. So the first one that I did, when we did the card at the top of the show, this is actually flat because 
it was the polish but with the sparkle texture paste and we also do a pearl we've got pearl on the show which i'm going to use later on in the uh, the day uh, these actually dry raised so it's a little bit like modeling paste um, structure paste it comes in all different names but this one's just a text called texture paste but it's got that gorgeous glitter and this one's aurora so you're getting all those lovely different colors in it when it catches the light so again let's just have a look inside there and just look this was the first one to sell out last time becky and i can see why it is so useful because it's sort of translucent when it's finished you're still going to see some of the uh, image work underneath so i'm just using a flat plastic spatula or you can use a metal one if you've got a metal one little bit a little bit out of here 50 percent of the stock of the aurora has gone 50 percent gone and literally just to drag it through that stencil so I, I just want to try and keep it on part of here not all the way across okay so a little tiny and it go again little bit goes a long way and you will find because they're all watercolor products it will pick up a little bit of that color from the pixie sparkle but don't worry all right that's all i want to do with it there that little bit and then gently take your stencil off pop that to one side and if you've got any product left on here i tend to just use my finger push it through the stencil onto a piece of scrap card and you're going to get sort of another piece that you can either die cut from you can start and use um, as another background the beginnings of another piece of a, a project so don't waste that uh, detail that's on it and then the rest of it will just while it's wet it will just wipe away if it's dried on again then just pop it under the tap with a little bit of uh, soapy water and it'll come away so again little tiny bit so it's going to last a while so we've got 50 mil pots with that one let me just clean all the tools up as i go along clean off the mat and then because that's wet that takes a wee bit longer to dry so i would probably say about half an hour or so for this to be touch dry so you can see here where we've got those layers now we've got the pink opaque ink we've got the lovely shimmer from the pixie sparkle and then just to that side there can you see that detail from the stencil so literally i'm going to bring in one that again i've got i've done and dry so i've got exactly the same here pop that one to one side for a second you can see where i've got that pink ink in the background a bit more mottled with the uh, the pixie from the blue and then i've brought in that stamp from the textured stamp sets and as i say i love this particular set is definitely going to be a favorite of mine because this one here and again i tend to just use this with my hand i don't bring any anything I don't want a big block of stamping over the whole thing and because we're only working on such a little project i tend to just put it in my fingers i've changed to a, a gray flagstone this is one of the finesse inks all right and literally just bring in little bit and i'm stamping over the top of the um, texture paste and i just want little elements of it here and there and you can see where it's sort of bringing in a bit more interest on there so i have done a bit of it already just clean the ink off your stamps again and then make sure we're all clean as we go along and again we're going to start and keep building on this one so what i've done at home is i've cut out using some of my heart uh, dies just some you know I love working with book paper again stuck a couple of bits to uh, some card just to strengthen it a bit and then this is actually going to be my main sort of image on here but just before we do that I'm going to use off this same stamp set I'm going to use the lovely little wavy they're almost like a postmark line <laughs> not that you can see there there we go look it's almost like a little postmark and I'm going to use this little round circle okay so again just little tiny bits of it here and there i'm going to stick the heart down because i want that postmark bit to come over the top of the heart so just a little bit of my tacky glue there just to pop this on top and as i say all i've done is back the book paper onto some card some scrap card and then literally cut it out with a die and just inked a little bit around the edge so we'll just give that a press on there and then i just need to grab um a little rocker block will do the trick try not to make as much noise as i did the other night 
I went rummaging for a rock. I'm like, trying to be really quiet while Ben was talking and the whole lot came out. It's like, what are you doing down there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like the old, old thing, isn't it? When you're trying to be quiet, nothing ever works. <laughs> So I pop the pin in there just so that my glue doesn't dry up. And then literally what I want to do is ink up that little postmark element. And I'm going to go for sort of a little bit across right across the actual base and into the stamp as well. So that it comes across both there. OK, and that's all I'm going to do with that bit. And again, just building these up. And then again, I put that little circle on. And these are just additional elements. You can stamp over the edge. It doesn't have to be a full image. So we can bring some of those. OK. And then just to finish off, I've got some little words again that are from my stash. Little tiny words. And this one says journey. So I'm going to add some glue to that one. And what I've done is I've made a set of three of these. All right, so we're going to have journey. We'll have it at a bit of an angle there. And I've actually done the other two already at home to make a set of them using the same products. All right. And you can just see there how we've got that set of three. It says create your own journey. So again, little tiny pieces of art that you can then, as I say, if you wish swap with your friends, you can keep them in your stash, whatever it is. You can actually make a set of 12 of them and you can use the uh, what, they, what they call the pocket letters. And they're like a plastic sleeve that's got 12 pockets in. And these just fit in nicely. All I've done is just back them on a little bit of black card just to give it a border. And you can see there that we've got... Um, just a backing on them. But yeah, just again, something a little bit of fun, just something a bit different for you, just to use all those different, you can see how those background stamps blend in beautifully with it, and then using a couple of those um, Cosmic Shimmer products thrown in there just for some added sparkle. Okay, dokes. I love yeah. them. How incredible are those? And there's so many ways that you could use those, you know, panel cards and things like that. Jan, thank you so much for sharing that. Remember that demo? That was the second demo of this show. <laughs> Just bear it in mind. Um, if you do want to treat yourself to the layering textured stamps, don't forget 51 elements in total you're going to be getting your hands on. And um, as you can see, there is a lot of elements and treats of fun that you could have with them. We have I've got a background stencils as well for you now which is definitely something you can use now do you have anyone in your friendship circle or your family who has got that real feeling for wanderlust you know they really want to go on holiday holiday they really want to go traveling maybe you've got someone in your family who's starting a new business or starting a new job or moving house well, if so, I think this collection is for you, especially with one of the sentiments, which I just love. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. This is life is a journey. And in this collection, you are going to be getting your stamps and you're going to be getting your stencils as well. We've got the beauty of these and you can see actually on the sort of embossed area here how you're getting that shimmer coming through to it. Now, this price on your screen is not the price they should normally be at all. Over £55, normally £30. Hands down, incredible deal. Um, it should be over $71 as well, but it's £39 for you today. In fact, it's much more expensive than just £55.92. £55,920,000. Yes, you're saving approximately 99.8%. Um, no, not quite. Slight typo. But you are making a massive save in there. And of course, it's even more if you are on Club Inspire. So you've got your lovely Life's a Journey one. You've then got one for all of those outdoors lovers, which is your make a wish collection so make a wish when you're um you know you get your dandelion heads and you blow them off and you try and blow them off and your wishes come true this is for them it's a beautiful detail and texture on that one as well as that we're going to be bringing to you for all you music fans 
Music and lyrics. We were talking about music before. What, what were you saying? Your daughter plays the bassoon, the piano. Oh, all sorts. Yes, the flute, banjo, uh, piano, all, all sorts of so different So this could be a good learns. one for her then. Yes, it would be nice <laughs> to do on her birthday card coming up for June, wouldn't it? I'm always looking for something different for them. Yeah, it's fab. So you've got your stave on here, you've got your treble clef on here, you've got these lovely textures going on, as well as all of those state sentiments, sorry. Then we have got your happiness blooms for everyone who loves the great outdoors this is the paneling or similar sorry to the paneling that you could use on your cards and you can of course use your paste with them as well you've got that lovely floral detail and design on those ones and sentiments including ones that we always love such as thinking of you not stopping there though we are bringing to you life happens now the life happens range when i'm looking at it it feels very victoriana it's got an element of steampunk to it which i love it's kind of that edgy uh, you know urban look as well with the sort of brick wall could almost imagine like a banksy being placed on that so this one is your life happens locks again in there because remember you are getting 56 elements in total outdoors lovers let's get back to nature we're bringing that one to you today we've got your leaves you've got your woodland texture on cartload earlier on we did the large wood background 12 by 12 stencil stencil of wood if you wanted to do a smaller version you could pair these up to get a really big layered effect maybe for your scrapbooks for example not stop in there i know i told you there was loads write your own story this one i have to say i'm slightly obsessed with i do like working with stencils i've never seen a stencil like this i adore that you've got those individual letters you've got almost that scrabble like feeling to it but then it's really varied with that kind of movement of the ink splodges this i think is my favorite one of this collection i just love it it's so express it's it's expressive isn't it i've really? used that one a lot as well i must admit i love those ink spots and that again just done with different colored inks makes a terrific background starting point for you to actually work on top of yeah it's incredible i just love it and then last but by no means least it's time we're bringing to you this it's time you're getting lots in there including never give up and much more but again you've got these lovely clocks imagine putting these on some of your um what are they called you know oh uh like your 3D houses that we do. I forgot what they're called. Oh, now. the village, the oh, country yes, village. The, the country yeah. village. You They'd be great, wouldn't they? Yeah. Different elements. Also, might be even quite nice on the things like your milk cartons and stuff. Well, yeah, because you could actually put the texture paste through them, Becky. I mean, that's actually done as a background, but then you could cut out, once the texture paste dry, you could cut out the individual clocks. Mm. And then you've got them as embellishments as well. So, yeah, use them, you know, to the best advantage. I'm always one for looking at how else you can use something as well as what it was actually designed for yeah it's just yeah. wonderful it really is and just to give you a little bit of a heads up that price point although it's not around forever <laughs> it's 45 percent off you're getting so do seize the moment if you love a bargain 45 percent discount i mean don't get me wrong i am the type of person who like if there's like 10 percent off a sandwich because it's like the end of the day and the corners are a bit soggy i'm still like yeah 10 percent off 45 <laughs> percent off that and it's not a soggy sandwich need i say more i probably won't we have got more coming up on the show for you today though i will let you know some of these are so low in stock that we might show them on screen and they might then sell out so please do seize the moment this is one that we worked with earlier on it was the teal marine 30 mil now we have got loads of other colors on the website do feel free to head over there four pounds or seven dollars 99 and as um lovely jan said you get that 30 mil and it goes so far as well as that we've got the cosmic shimmer now this is the aurora so when we think of aurora we're thinking of aurora borealis aka the northern lights and that's exactly what you get with this that translucency and then that wonderful glitter of um you know the northern lights it really is a special one that one and i've got a wait for it 60 percent stock gone okay 60 percent 
if I remember rightly, the Aurora one. Yeah, it is so low in Very stock. universal, that one, isn't it? That's perfectly it, yeah. yeah. Could be for anyone, doesn't matter what your age, what your gender, yeah. what your interests. Yeah, everyone can use that one. So over now, 60% of the stock gone, so please do seize the moment. And also, we've brought to you the layering textured stamps. Don't forget, 51 of them you got in total. And you've got a massive discount with, um, with all of those ones. So if you do want to seize the moment again, please do use it because you're buying five and getting the one for free. So do feel free to treat yourself to that. We are in Masterclass if you've just tuned in. Hi, how are you? My name's Becky. It's so nice to be with you. And um, we have been very entertained and quite frankly, uh, so many of you messaging in just inspired by loads of your makes, Jan. People just saying how um, they can't wait to get these home, how they can't wait to use them. I did have a couple of questions for you, actually. Brian did message in saying, what kind of wipes are you using to clean the stamps, please? Just general baby wipes. So cheap as chips. They don't have to be anything special. Uh, if you're not a lover of baby wipes, then the um, microfiber cloths are a good one. So if you just damp them down, just spray. I, I use one of those at home. Just spray it with my water mister and use those to give them a good scrub. And then obviously you can wash the cloth out. For right. speed here, we do tend to use the baby wipes, but uh, whichever you prefer. Because we're working with mainly water-based products, most things will clean off with water. Perfect. Aisha's saying, OMG. Jan always making things look so easy um, said add the kit from the last magazine and it would be a beautiful hello card she could make yes love that idea yep, by all means um, so many of you getting involved with this do keep those messages coming in on socials and don't forget that we are going to be voting for demo of the show soon but I think we've got time for a bit more crap. Oh, I don't think so. We? Yeah, we've, we're not even through the first hour yet, are we? So we'll keep going. So I'm going to come to the 3D uh, uh, embossing folders now and stencil. So what we're trying to do is show you as many of the products that we, you know, you could use. I mean, this is just touching the surface of what you can use with those beautiful cosmic shimmer products. They're literally mix into your craft stash beautifully. And we're going to go back to the metallic gilding polishes this time. And I've got the beautiful paint pink one which is blossom and then this gorgeous it's called red bronze and I think that describes it perfectly yeah. so again we're going to layer these up I'm going to start with the pale pink as a background and then add some detail with the bronze one so what I'm actually going to do is again not necessarily use all the components the way that this product was designed is that you have a beautiful 3d sculpted embossing folder with those roses on this one I've chosen lovely roses for my demo so you've got the uh, the, the mesh at the back and then three beautiful traditional type roses and then the products actually designed so that once you've embossed you've then got stencil element which matches up beautifully with the design to then start and highlight so you've got one layer and then you've actually got a second more defining layer to build up that detail on the top of the embossing now I'm going to skip one of those layers out I'm actually going to take the bulk of the stencil the one with all the big flower on away I don't actually want that piece I'm just going to use the embossing folder and then I'm going to take this one. You can see where I've actually been playing with the, uh, the bronze polish there. I've not cleaned it off properly because I knew I was going to use it again today. So to start off with then, I've got a plain piece of white stamping card. And I tend to use the stamping card because it's 300 GSM. So because we're actually going to be applying things to it, you want something that's of a decent substance. Our Nina cardstock would work, but it's a little bit bit thinner so if I was using Nina I would probably stick a couple of pieces together or stick it to a piece of scrap cardstock so it gives it a little bit of weight so what we're actually going to do is we're going to take the polish so if you weren't watching us at the top of the show this is one of the cosmic shimmer products and it comes complete in its own little set with the applicator as part of it so pop your thumbs against the applicator and push and it's got its own little sponge applicator that comes with the, uh, the product. So you don't have to worry, like with the inks where we've all got the uh, extra sponge applicators to match all the inks, this one actually comes as part of it and it's integrated into the design. It just clicks into the back of the pot to store and then just clicks back out when you come to use it. And then when we undo the pot, again, you've got all this gorgeous, creamy goodness. When you can see the metallic 
the mica in there, just the texture, oh. just it's beautiful. Looks isn't like it? snazzy marshmallow. Isn't it gorgeous? Yeah. So I'm going to use this one to colour the piece of card. So you could, you might think, well, okay, Jan, you know, but you could just use a piece of Centura pearl. You could, you could use the baby pink Centura pearl and get a very similar result. But what's the fun in that? You know, you like, Alan, you know me, I like to get a bit messed up. So again, I'm just going to take some of that. It's almost like a, a creamy mousse texture. And I've dipped the sponge in and then I'm actually wiping off the excess on the edge of the, uh, the jar there. And all I'm going to do is literally cover. Now, it's a very, very pale one, this. But when I tip it towards the light, you'll be able to see that colour pick up. So again, just stretching it across there. I'm applying a little bit of pressure and a couple of layers just to build up the depth of colour and then I'm going to flip it round and do the other side and again it doesn't use much of your product I'm just going to grab a piece of kitchen paper because I don't want to put my big fingerprints in that beautiful paste there and again I'm going to come from the other side now and just finish blend it into where we would got to on that one and as I say just build it up the more you put on the more depth of colour you will build up. So depending on, you know, how opaque you want it to be, then just let it dry and add another layer, OK? But because we're going to do other things to it, I'm not too fussed about how perfect this layer is. I'm always talking about layering things up. So when you're done, I tend to click the little top piece back into there and then as I say just make sure that you've not got product around the edge it's also good housekeeping so that your lid doesn't fasten tight okay and then again water based so I'm just going to spray a little bit of water on there and clean up that spare product and then we're just going to make sure this is dry because I'm actually going to sort of first of all do some die cutting and then emboss it through that 3d folder Whilst you're pretending to dry, can I just ask you this, uh, <laughs> this question um, that's coming from Eileen, I think it is. It says, hi, can you use any of the polishes on metallic paper? Yes, yes, it will go on any. So anything, pretty much. The metallic polish will go on your MDF as well. They really, really are good quality products. It will cover, you know, it doesn't have to be plain. It could even be onto your, you could edge your design papers, your pattern papers with this as well. You can use it as well, a little bit like we use the more traditional, um, the one that you're more you probably used to is the Pebio gilding polish, uh, gilding wax. Where we dip in here with our finger, you can do the same with these. The big difference with them is that the Pebio is a wax. This is actually a water-based polish. So obviously you know that water and wax won't mix. This actually needs a solvent to break it down. Um, so it is literally waxed to, for use for highlighting. It was initially designed for, uh, for furniture and things like that. But once you've got a water-based product, it opens it up to so much more. As I say, a little bit of this on your mat, just diluted with a bit of water and a paintbrush, you've got a beautiful metallic paint. Oh, like wow. I said earlier, you can add it to your... If you've got plain modelling paste or white gesso, you can add it to that to make a coloured modelling paste or make a coloured paint with your gesso. Obviously, if you're using it with something white, it's going to dilute the colour a little bit. It'll lighten it a little bit. But so many different things to do with it. It's like I could do a show just on one of the products but we bring lots of them but if we actually have a look at this now you wow. can just look at the shimmer Whoa. honestly it's very very pale it's a blush pink color but just look at how that that was the plain boring old white side yeah. which hasn't got a hint of shimmer to it not even if I twist it into the light and you've turned it into that gorgeous piece of shimmery metallic card stop brilliant so what i'm going to do next i've just brought from home one of my rectangle dies and i want to just pop this through the machine because i want to cut a piece out of the middle before i actually put it through the embossing folder and the reason being is i want to sort of lift the middle element out to make it a bit more 
of a focal point. Now, if you're going to do any die cutting alongside embossing, always do the die cutting first because once you've embossed and you've got that beautiful texture, to then put it through again and die cut is going to flatten all your embossing. And again, I'm speaking from experience because when I was prepping, I actually did that and thought, oh, that doesn't look very much like 3D embossing now. So yeah, make sure that you do any die cutting first. So I'm just going to pop that through the Gemini and then we're going to run it back through again with that gorgeous 3D folder. So what we've done is we've created an aperture in the centre now. Get rid of the plate. Oh no, I need, uh, I need some of those plates, don't I? will keep those ones. So we've actually taken a piece out of the centre and I'm going to use both. Just be gentle with the tape there so that it doesn't damage your card. Put that to one side. So literally you've created yourself a frame and I've got the piece out of the middle. Now I'm going to emboss all of it. So I'm literally going to pop it inside my folder, work out which bit's which. So that's my raised part. I'm going to put all of it back in. So because we've die cut it, that will just sit back in the middle. I want to emboss all of it. But like I said, if I embossed it first and then cut it, it would have flattened my embossing. So because I'm using a 3D folder for our Gemini, I've got my clear plate, a magnetic shim, and I'm going to use the plastic shim as my top layer. So I've omitted that top clear plate. If you're using any other type of uh, die cutting machine, just have a look in your instructions. There should be something along the lines for your 3D embossing folders because they're not, they're not a new thing now. They've been out a while. Okay. And then when we take this out now, we've got, oh, just look, wow. absolutely gorgeous. So we've got that beautiful, beautiful embossing, but I've got the two separate pieces going on. Wow. Okay. So, what we're going to do now is take away the smaller piece and I'm going to bring this in and this just lines up beautifully with the embossing underneath. So you can actually get the embossed pieces to fit through the stencil. And what I'm going to do, bring a piece of scrap in again underneath. I'm going to use this gorgeous red bronze now, but I'm actually going to pop Again, I'm going to use, rather than the big applicator, I just want a smaller piece because, again, I want it to be a little bit more, um, a bit more detailed. So the big applicator is going to end up with a bit too much product. Now, what I will say is when you've embossed something or die cut it, when it's gone through the machine, it will stretch it slightly. So when you try and line this up over the whole thing in one go, you'll think, well, it fits here, but it's not quite lined up at the bottom. So take it one little bit at a time. Because the card just stretches slightly, there's a little bit of movement in lining up the bottom part to the top. So I'm going to work from the top first. And what this is going to do is just highlight some of the raised parts of the embossing. So again, similar to that first demo, I've taken some out onto my cut and dry foam, and I'm just going to pounce that through that stencil and it's going to catch the raised areas that are embossed from that beautiful embossing folder. So again, just over the top and then when I've done the first bit, I'm just going to realign it and make sure that the next bit's in the right place to catch the stencil. So again, I'm only using a little tiny bit of the product. I don't need a lot of it. If you want a stronger colour, you can go back once it's dry. Just remember that you've moved the stencil, Jan. And then again, this side, I'm just going to double check that it's in the right place before I start with the colour. OK. And just pop it through there. And then when we remove this, you'll see that it's got that beautiful pink underneath. But then we've highlighted the raised areas with that gorgeous red bronze and these are both the metallic ones you could have just as easily if you wished have used the chalk one underneath like we did in the first demo and then put the metallic over the top but i decided to go for both metallics on this one don't ask me why it was oh, just no, what my brain decided why. at the time i love that <laughs> 
<laughs> no real thought behind it. It was just that we wanted that colour. Yeah, so when not? we take this away now, can you see how that's just cool. highlighted yeah. areas of that, that stencil part? We've not got loads of it. Wow. We've just taken parts of it off. So let's just pop that back together. I don't want to do the middle piece. I'm going to leave that bit plain. All right. And again, it's all water based. So a little bit of water on there, a little bit of kitchen paper and we can get the bulk of that off so that it doesn't transfer to our project, okay? So this is what we've got so far. We have got our frame, and then we've got that lovely piece for the inside. So what I've done is I've made a matte layer for it with a little bit of, um, this is just some scrap paper that I'm not sure whether it's from one of our pads or whether it's from one of mine at home actually. It was in my scrap box and I thought, oh, I like that because it looks like fabric. It is actually Hessian print, but it's, it's paper. So it could just have been a piece of Hessian. So we're actually gonna pop this on. Now I did cut it down slightly just to make the right size. So again, you can see the one that I've done at home is exactly the same. I've just trimmed it slightly. You can see it's just a wee bit smaller in places. So that one is gonna stick flat on here. So I think we'll probably use some Kalal. When you've been embossing, the Kalal glue's great because it seeps into where your debossed areas are on the cardstock and you'll get a nice bond on there. So plenty on the background there. And then I knew somewhere in my stash I did actually have some Hessian. So I had a rummage through all the, uh, the debris that's the craft room mm. and I did find it. So that one's going to go on flat. And this one's going to be almost like a little uh, plaque. Now, I got this far and thought, actually, this would make a nice photo frame. You know, you've oh, got yeah. this far with it. You could have actually popped a photograph in the back of it there. So just a little bit too much glue there, Jan. But because it's Kalal, it will just wipe away from the edges there. So yes, I went to rummaging and I found actually some proper, and this is self-adhesive Hessian, mm. okay? So before that, I'm gonna map that piece that we took out of the middle. I've put some foam on the back of that. We're gonna map that one onto the real Hessian. But just before then, I think we've also got on the show, we've got the, um, the sizal bundle, which yeah, I had on do. the Dreamy show. Yes, yeah, So you moss. get, um, it looks like this one. Oh, it's sold out. My sorry. I'll not show you then. My producer's just saying it's sold out. It did look like this. Well, it yeah. still does look like this, but it's sold out. So we'll have to work on getting that one back in for you. But again, it's great for just adding a bit more interest. So all I've done is taken a bit and screwed it up, just stretched it out and screwed it. I'm going to put this in the back. Okay. So. <laughs> Let me just have a, I want, oh, there's all sorts happening down here. I just want my uh, Whilst you're looking, gun. oh, I was yep. just going to say, you're okay. um, Aisha's in St. Jan is so full of great tips today. Thank you. You are welcome. So much. It was capital letters. Um, and um, also saying that she's got these folders and now you've given us so much to do with them. Brilliant. That's what we like to hear. <laughs> so again, this has actually got like a, a sticky back piece on it but it's been there a while. So I think I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue on the back as well, just in places. And this is going to go over the top and it's just slightly bigger than that aperture to make like, and there's only a little bit of that sizal stuck out, but it's just giving you a bit more something, um, you know, another texture to yeah, play with. Layer. Mm. So again, this one, I've got a foam square on the back of it, but I'm going to add a bit of the glue as well because I want it, it's going to be a, a hanging plaque. So I want to make sure everything's stuck together. So make sure that the roses line up with what we'd got in the first place. And that one's going to go on top. So you've got continuation of your folder there with the flowers, but you've got that Hessian breaking it up to match the frame. OK, and then again, I had them out on my desk. So this is actually from one of the um, textured backgrounds again. So we've got the missing you. I've just stamped that out and backed that onto a little bit of the Hessian as well. So again, you can see how they mix and match across all of them. I'm not even going to take the backing off this time. I'm just going to put the glue on the back. So we're going to put that one across the bottom there. Okay. 
And then I did actually bring just a little bit of ribbon, which I think we will use the double-sided tape on the back. And I'm just going to put a couple of bits on the back there so that we can actually put the ribbon on. And then you could use this. You know, it could just as easily be a card front, but doing it that way, then you can see we've got that sort of means of hanging it if you wanted to pop it onto the wall or onto a door. Uh, again, I think, or as I say, I was, I was making it, I thought it would, you know, to have a photograph in the middle of it would be lovely as well, wouldn't it? Oh, but as I say, this could just as easily be on the front of a card, you know, so I've made it into a plaque, but it could be a card front just the same. But incorporating those different textures, again, it just makes somebody want to just have a feel at it. Oh, so yes, so that's magical. your 3D folders then. So that was number three. Oh, we're doing okay. Oh, mm -hmm. we are. Oh, Jan, I've absolutely adored that. And so many people have at home as well. We've got um, Jean saying, definitely saving this class. Are we watching it back from the beginning? Oh. Uh, we had Mary in saying, fabulous show, and that she's been too busy watching to comment. <laughs> uh, but she's oh, managed bless. it now. <laughs> if you've loved that make, let's do your shopping lift list of what you're going to need for it so it is a 3d folders and stencils with the 15 elements that were used should be 50 pounds was today though 39.96 um so a massive saving again on that one that's what created the lovely textured detail with the florals then we had the metallic gilding polish and this is giving you that blossom effect that made that Plain white card, snazzy. It was £5.75 or £9.99 in dollars. We also used the red bronze. Now, this is the one that we put through the stencils to give that sort of di dimensioned effect to the florals. I love this colour. I'm thinking about this colour for um, if anyone loves peacock feathers. You know, they have a lot of brown and iridescence. This would be great for that. Again, £5.75 or $9.99. And remember, all of these deals, you get extra money off if you're part of our Club Inspire. If you don't know what it is, stick around because this is it. Welcome to Club Inspire, our free loyalty club. As a member of the club, you can save up to 20% every time you shop with us. For every pound you spend, whether it's in one of our stores or on our website, you'll collect one loyalty point. The more points you have, the more benefits you'll receive. As a welcome present, we'll give you 20% discount with your very first order. Once you place your first order, you'll be given 250 points straight away, making you a bronze member. This will mean that you'll receive a 5% discount on all of your purchases until the end of the next calendar year, plus priority postage. 500 points takes you up to silver membership, where you'll get 10% discount, plus free shipping when you spend over £20. When you get to 750 points, you'll become a gold member, which gets you a whopping 15% discount on every order, and will ship them to you completely free, no matter how big or small they are. Spend over £25 and we'll send them to you via our premium next day delivery carrier service. When you reach 1500 points, you'll become a Platinum member, giving you the same shipping benefits as a Gold member, but with the added bonus of a massive 20% discount on all of your purchases. Now on top of that, you'll receive exclusive discounts, sneak peeks of brand new products, special offers and money saving vouchers. You'll have access to an exclusive secret Facebook group to meet like-minded friends, to find out information first and to be inspired by all the crafty makes. Become a member of our club today. So that is how you can save even more when you're already saving. If you've just tuned in, hey up, how are you? My name's Becky and I'm joined by the wonderful Jan who's going to be inspiring us with even more very, very shortly. Before that though, I did give you a bit of a sneak peek somewhat similar on the morning, um, on the morning show, the wake up call. And these were the huge 12 by 12 pattern stencils. I don't know why they don't get me to do the music for four. 
Just me at the end. Wake up call. Something we could think about. Anyway, 12 by 12 pattern stencils I've got. And it's a collection of eight of these ones. Now, they are 12 by 12. Now, that means you have got maximum opportunity to make your own 12 by 12 papers, etc. And you can see these are some of the effects you get. And, ooh, good textures. Uh, we are bringing to you your Moroccan tile. In here, you've also got the Chesterfield. Sorry, I'm laughing because I've got them all upside down. I'm trying to read upside down. Um, your Chesterfield leather here. You've got your deco tiles. I love this. So 1920s. Imagine this with some of the wonderful uh, glaze over the top of it. Maybe go for one of the goldens. Get that black on gold effect. Very 1920s uh, art deco. We've also got your... Oh, hello, sorry. We've also got your black spots in here as well. This one, I think, has got a really wonderful feel to it. It reminds me a little bit of a... Do you remember in the BFG where they drink the whiz-popping juice? <laughs> yeah, it's a bit like that, isn't it? It could be good fun. As well as that, I'm bringing to you your sketched swirls. Sketched swirls we've got here for you. Again, that is it with it against the black. I really like this one. I think it's got a, a fun feel to it because it almost looks a little bit like... Um, Someone's sort of throwing streamers at a party, doesn't it? And we've also got the falling hearts as well for all of you swooning. I have to stop myself reaching for that one. Because it's one of our favourites, that. Is it? Yeah. I can understand why. It's really um, animated, Gorgeous. isn't it? I've also got your natural stone, which, as I mentioned before, you know, it could be great for a mosaic floor design. You can actually do almost like a paper piecing detail and design with this and pick out all of the different colours. And then last but by no means least, your wood grain. Super Instagrammable background for you here. And I think it would be wonderful maybe for any of the 3D houses that we have, the lovely little village. You could actually use this inside some of them, maybe as flooring. Could look cool. So today we're bringing all of that to you massive saving um nearly 16 pounds off so what you're going to be doing is you're going to be getting two of them for free as part of this deal and part of that price so seize the moment on that because these are going to keep you going and going and you'll be able to make your own 12 by 12 uh, card packs and backings and so much more with them so if you do fancy it now is your time to seize the moment on all of those let's get inspired with what fabulous things we can do with these what are we making jam oh we're gonna do sort of a i'm gonna go scrapbook page this time but i'm not going for the traditional 12 by 12 i'm gonna do sort of an 8 by 8 one so again i said earlier that just because your stencil is is almost 12 by 12 inches square doesn't mean that your project has to be having said that i think these would be great for adding some detail to your pattern papers so again we've got all those beautiful papers that come in the the paper pads that we do at crafters companion but how about just adding a little bit of extra it doesn't have to be the whole thing could just be a little corner where you've added a bit of detail to your pattern papers so i'm going to use the dots and spots and i've actually taken a piece of pattern paper funnily enough and i've done all sorts to it already you know you might think well it's a bit of paper jan it's out of the uh, letters from the heart paper pad and i used the actual reverse of it because i wanted the text on it so first thing i did was use my little paper um i can never find this in the but it gets hidden in the bottom of the bag the little paper crimper which oh i, I can't find it here it is you got right it? in the bottom Whilst you're grabbing there that, I'll read out some messages saying that, that paper looks re like real burlap. Yeah, you're totally right with the fabric. And um, also, mm, Rosalind is saying, I love stenciling. I have so many of these. And Patty's saying that she too is saving the show because she's loving what Lovely. you're making. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I've just used my little paper uh, distresser and I've gone round all the edges and literally roughed them up to make them sort of look aged. All right, so that was step one. Then I've added a little bit of gesso. So the white gesso, um, we've also got on the show, which comes in a tube like so. All right, so I've literally added a little bit of that to my mat, took a bit of scrap card and just over the top. What I wanted to do is push the pattern 
backwards a little bit so that it wasn't so bold. And then I've had a little bit of colour over the top of the gesso with some ink, just to bring some colour into it rather than the plain uh, paper. So that's as far as we've got so far. And then what I want to do is actually add some detail with these little dots. And we're going to use that beautiful sea green sparkle texture paste again. So this is similar to the Aurora. It's the same range, but this one's got your green tones in it rather than that aurora uh, uh, colours in it so again absolutely lush we're going to use the uh, the palette knife again and i'm just going to pick out certain areas i'm going to have an element here with my photograph so i don't need so much on this side so i think probably around that top corner so again i'm going to take some of the it's almost like a, a gel substance and then it's got the glitter particles inside it so again i'm just going to lay it on and it's a little bit like buttering your toast if you feel safer actually sticking this uh, down you can tape your stencil in place but i must admit i'm usually flying by the seat of my pants and end up just and i'm not too worried if it's not perfect either i don't necessarily you know don't mind if a little bit of it's not quite right that's the whole idea behind this so literally just push it through keep the um the palette knife flat so that you're getting it through that stencil and then just take off any spare and pop that goodness back in your pot don't waste it so any of that that's just on the actual stencil i'm just going to scrape off with the knife and put that back in so you can see how little i've used there and then when we take this off we've got that extra detail onto there so again i'm just going to move that to one side in fact i was just going to grab that but i'm going to scoop that as well into there and then clean the rest and then again this bit you know if you've got some scrap we'll use the bit that i was using earlier here look and again either with you you know you can use a, a, a piece of kitchen paper if you wish but i usually just go in with my fingers and literally push anything that's left on there rather than just literally washing it down the sink push it back through your stencil and I tend to just keep a piece of cardstock handy for all of this, whether it be, you know, cleaning up some ink off the mat or whether it be cleaning a stencil like this. So you can see now there's very little left on my stencil and this will just rinse under the tap now when I get home with some warm water. But just look, we're building up sort of like I've got smears of the chalk paint on it from earlier. Now we've got a little bit of this, you know, and then I would actually start adding ink to this. And you're going to end up creating a background for something else so this goes on the background pile at home and i end up sort of adding to it as i go on maybe cleaning stamps off on it and stamping on it and then normally i would be leaving this to dry but because i want to carry on working i've not got one of these already done so we're going to pop the heat tool on it is on it's on and my hand's telling me it's on because it's hot and then we're just going to give this a bit of a and i'm going to heat, keep the heat tool moving normally we'd say to you concentrate on if you were embossing and concentrate on one area but i don't want the paste to burn i just want it to dry so i'm going to keep that heat tool moving over it it doesn't take long it will probably take about 30 minutes if you left it to air dry but obviously with the heat tool over it it's going to quick uh, speed that up and make it much quicker so again just make sure that it's actually dry and we're going to go on to another element of it while i'm waiting so i'll give that a blast for now and pop it to one side because i'm going to just do something else while that's finishing it's not quite dry yet but we'll uh, just leave that to one side i've got a matten layer ready so again i've just got some textured cardstock with another piece from that same collection and again i've distressed all the edges and add a little bit of ink round and this piece is going to go on top at a slight angle to create my layer so that's my eight by eight background and then we've also got on the show the um balloon sentiments which again are great if you're using scrapbook papers um these are great for making your title so most scrapbook pages have some kind of title so what i've done is i've actually just taken the metal element out of here because they come with a stamp set as well so you get the stamp to stamp the word and the metal to cut it out and then you could add happy birthday happy anniversary happy new home for example in this one there are lots of other words as well 
but I chose this one for my title. And what I've done is, you saw me do this earlier, I've used the chalk paint again and I've gone this time for the aqua. And I've literally just coloured a piece of white card. So it started off white and I've turned it into that lovely chalky uh, aqua finished colour. Okay, and we're going to cut, we're going to die cut this out of that piece of scrap there. So let me just get my plates for the... Uh, the Gemini and we'll stick this down and just die. Uh, gosh I was a bit uh, frugal there wasn't I? It only just fits on there. Don't like wasting anything clearly. Right we'll turn that one over because we cut on that side last time. Thin metal die and I'm going to pop that through the machine to cut that out. Okay so that one's going to go through there. And I've actually done this once already. I'm going to layer them up to make it a little bit more substantial. So this is going to be my top layer in that beautiful green. Okay, and when we take this off now, we've actually got our wording that we're going to use on the scrapbook page. So again, if I just use my... Oh, I don't need the pokey tool. There we go, look popped out all by itself. So pop that one on there. That's the, the rubbish. You can see now that we've got those birthday balloons to say happy. Okay. So what I did previously at home was, was very much the same thing. Didn't quite get my colour all the way to the end, but I wasn't bothered about this because I'm going to layer these up. And then what I've done on the back is I've stuck some pieces of... Um, just cream right. twine, you know, it can be, it could be ribbon, it could be coloured twine, whatever you, I just happened to grab this one and I wanted to keep that fairly neutral and I've just stuck those on the back and then what I'm going to do is put this one on the top so that we've got a little bit more substance. So the cut out of it is actually looking at it, a scrap of Centura Pearl, I thought it was stamping card. But when I've just looked at the back here, it's actually uh, pearlized. So it's the reverse side of Centura Pearl that I've used to stamp, uh, to colour on. So whatever you've got lying around in your scrap box, but because we've die cut them, I know that those are going to line up beautifully. And that just gives it that little bit more substance to, uh, to be my title. And also it's, it's raising it just a little bit to, uh, to what it was. You can offset them. I know some people like to do them in a different colour and offset them to give it a shadow, but I just wanted the substance of this to make it into something that was a bit more robust. So we stuck those two together. And then I've brought along some little tiny pieces. So I've got some scraps again out of the, uh, the box. I've got a little scrap of paper doily that I've added a bit of ink to. We're going to use that. Little tiny scrap of pink, and I'll explain why I've got the pink as well. Get rid of that bit. And then I've brought along, this is my big girl, when she was about so just cute. over 12 months old. This is Toby, my little grandson's mummy. And she's about the same age in this photo, I think, as what Toby is now. He's just over a year old. And I was looking for something that was fairly, I didn't want a lot of colour in it. And this is literally mainly her. She's got a little white dress on. There's a little pink bow, which she's got on her dress and her headband, which is why I've just brought this little tiny bit of pink in to link it with Aww. the photograph. And she's got a little teddy here in her hand. So this is Vanessa. If she's watching. She'll be like, Mom, what are you doing? Because she didn't know anything about it. <laughs> so let's just see if this is dry enough to work with. I think we should be okay. It's not quite dry. But I think if I put my adhesive on this part, I think we should get away with it. So literally, I'm going to pop some double-sided tape onto the base rather than on the back of my... Uh, if I turn it over and the dots aren't quite dry. So if we do it this way... And again, I'm not too worried if not all the edges are stuck properly. So again, we'll pop that on and just press it down in places. I'm trying not to catch the dots because obviously at home you would have time. You know, this would be tea break time or coffee break. You know, go make yourself a cuppa, put your feet up for a few minutes and leave the paste to dry. Don't do what I do and try and sort of fix it all together before it's dry. It's just that obviously we only have so much time to spend with you on each show. So there we go, we're okay. And then little Vanessa's gonna go at this side, but just underneath there, I've just got those scraps that I'm gonna slot underneath. So again, we'll stick those to the photo rather than the, the background. So I just want a little bit of this peeping out at the side here and a little bit of the pink 
as I say, just to tie in, because this was all green and neutral. And then, as I say, there was the pink in here. So just that little bit there is enough to just tie it in with the, uh, the rest of it. And then we're going to pop some double sided and the tape pens are acid free so if you're wanting to do scrapbook work these are great for anything like that and one of the ideas i've got if you weren't with us at the top of the show uh, next thursday i have got a craft along using some of the cosmic shimmer products now i've got a couple of ideas to try when i get home but one of them is actually scrapbooking so using incorporating some of these gorgeous goodies so I will let you know as soon as I've decided what that's going to be. And if you've bought some of the products, then it'll give you a chance to come and craft along with us on Thursday. Great. So that one's going on there. And then we're going to have the happy as the actual um, title on there. So again, I'm going to keep it fairly flat. So I've actually got some tape on the back of here that's sticking the twine down, but we'll use some of that just help stick it as well whoops if it's not stuck to me and then I'll add a little bit of wet glue to the back of there as well okay so just in places just using my applicator to add a bit of wet glue onto it as well you could you could raise this up if you want to but if you're going to pop it into a, a pocket a plastic pocket to actually uh, preserve it then it wants to be fairly flat so this is going to go straight over the top there and then all these are going to come down to meet together at the bottom like so all right so i don't want to cover too much of her up with that but this is actually going to come down so i'm going to use a little bit of hot glue at the bottom just here and then we can run all those pieces through the hot glue like so just be careful not to stick your finger in it because it is hot glue it's called hot glue for a reason okay and leave that one there and then i've got a little metal embellishment from my stash that says live laugh love so i'm going to put that over the top there to actually cover where my strings are attached and then i've cut out some flowers Again, this is one of my favourite little flower dies, and it came with one of the die sets that came out with the mini, I believe, and it was a set. It's got some other bits and pieces on it as well, but this is a little square element that cuts out all the flowers together, and I use it over and over and over again. So again, it's another one that stays out on the, uh, the side. So we're going to just pop some of these on the side here as embellishments. So I've got five flowers. Again, I like to work in odd numbers, threes and fives, and just, just sort of the, the in thing. So we'll pop one there, one there. We'll put one up at the top there. And then we'll come back to that with the smaller one again. And then a little tiny one. And again, if you use a, a hot glue gun and you get those little strings of glue, I can just see them across my project now. When it's all done and dry, just use your heat tool gently over the top of it and all that glue just disappears. It just melts into nothingness and disappears. And then the last thing, I've got a couple of those little words again and I've got some leaves to stick. Whoops, don't stand on the glue gun, John. So just behind the flowers there, we're going to pop. And these are just some that I've stamped out. And these are from the, um, those textured backgrounds. Again, they come in handy. This is from the Into the Woods one. You've got a little tiny leaf on there, which I've just stamped out and added a bit of colour to. So again, these are just going to finish off those flowers there, as much or as little as you wish. So if any of you out there are interested in the Craft Along and you've got some of the Cosmic Shimmer products, pop onto my page on Crafter's Companion. Um, and if, you know, if, you, if there's anything that you'd particularly like to do, I haven't made a decision yet as to what I'm actually going to do. So if there's anything you'd like to cover, you know, just let me know. I'm not saying that we will do it for definite, but all the ideas go into the pot. And then just the little wording last two little bits just says 
sweet girl on there, which she was. Well, she still is technically. Mm. So we're just going to put those down one side there. And these are just ones that have been printed off and then I've backed them onto little pieces of card. So sweet girl. And again, just to show you that your scrapbook pages don't always have to be 12 by 12 in size. If that's a bit daunting and it's a bit big. Now, I personally, looking at that now, think this is a bit bright. OK, I think it's in contrast, it's a little bit bright. So what I'm going to do in true Jan style is finger in the pot and I'm just going to pop a little bit of that glitter just over the top of it to take the colour back a little bit and tie it in with those spots. So don't be afraid, you know, if you think, oh, it doesn't quite look right, don't be afraid to go back in and add a bit to it. It should just take that brightness off it a little bit and it's going to tie, as I say, that sparkle in with the, the spots in the background. So looking at that now, There we go. Look, it's just taking it back a little bit so it's not quite so bright. Mm. So, yes, that's my little Vanessa when she was a baby. She's now, what is she now? Nearly 32 years old now, so it's a while ago. But, yeah, that's Toby's mummy, bless her. So if I hold you that one up, that's on your 8 by 8 OK? That's great stuff. That's so lovely. My little what? princess. <laughs> What a fab picture. It's brilliant. Thank you so much for showing us that. Isn't, has that inspired you? Good. Well, go and grab what you need, including that sea green. That's the cosmic shimmer, the textured paste. That's on your screen if you wanted to use that one. I've got more treats on the way for you. We're going to get on to balloon sentiments now. If you are brand new, hi, welcome. Welcome. It's lovely to see you. Um, don't forget, first order today, you get 20% off. You will also get some bonus points but if you are new and you maybe haven't seen our packaging before let me show you this is what you're going to be getting so this is how it comes um, this one is holding 27 individual components including dies which is the metal but also the stamps and the stamps look like fabulous Look how brilliant they are. They all line up absolutely perfectly. So you've got loads of your, um, you know, lovely elements in here, including your balloons. You've got little glasses of bubbles. You've got your bunting. Anyone else looking at that and thinking, make that a different colour? It's a sausage. So you could write things like, like if you call anyone your little sausage. Do you know what I mean? Oh, my little sausage. Or... Um, you could say, oh, you're the, you're the worst, as in like spelt like worst, you know, Brackverst. I'll work on others. That literally just came to me, but I thought I'd share it with you. Oh, my little sausage. You've also got uh, these lovely sparkles and like fireworks. Imagine that with your pixie sparkle. How fabulous would that look with the small and large mic is giving you that really dynamic shimmer over that. It'd look great. And then I'm bringing to you your actual stamp and dies. So you've got your congrats here. You've got your thanks. You're also getting your baby one. Welcome, baby boy or girl, uh, of course. And uh, you're getting the new there as well. I've got happy. Um, and you've got happy anniversary, happy new home, happy birthday. Hey, up, happy new home. Maybe with the um, journey, the world journey one earlier on would look really cool, couldn't it? Then I've got, oh, friends. I've got friends for anyone that maybe you've not seen for a while and you're glad to catch up with them. This could be a lovely little card. Maybe you could send this to them, inviting them for a little bench sit down somewhere. This could be their invite. That'd be quite nice. Birthday I've got for you as well. And we've also got your love, which would go great with the falling hearts um, 12 by 12 that I did before the stencil. That'd look really nice. But I'm not stopping there. Oh, no. I've also got one of my favourites. Your paper pads. Always got to have a sniff. Uh, you have got absolutely oodles in here. So they're 48 pieces, 12 by 12, as you can see. And they are bold, bright, fun, joy-filled. They are truly wonderful. You're getting so much in here. Scrapbooks, Mother's Day, Easter. It's um, Earth Day today, isn't it? 
um, of course. So you've got some in here that would be great for Earth Day kind of makes. You've got ones that would be used for Valentine's Day. I love this one. It reminds me of almost willow pattern, you know, the um, crockery. I think that goes really great. But yeah, you've got loads and loads and loads in there. As you can see, 48 of them. And you can use them to create some stunning cards like this one by the lovely Jackie. So if you do want to seize the moment on this, it's a massive saving. Should be nearly £97 or $122. Today, though, it's just 67 $83 or $85.05. So do seize the moment on that. You saw earlier on that Jam was discussing using my next product a little bit. This is your gesso. It is back in stock. It is your leading perfect primer. It is for everything you need and it is in the white colour, which is always extremely popular. So seize the moment on that. And whilst you're seeing in the moment i think we can definitely squeeze in another demo with jan one more demo right one we're gonna demo. literally throw everything at this one so a bit of everything we've seen we're going to bring it all together now and we're going to use the mdf so the lady that asked about the mdf earlier uh, becky we'll be able to have a look at this now so this is out of my stash and again these are boats i buy them online from the several of the stores doing expensive pieces of mdf we've got some of our dreamies products on our website you know so lots of different ones so what i've done is i've applied a layer of gesso just to one side okay so this is actually the white gesso which is almost like an undercoat so if you're doing painting at home you often prime it first with an undercoat and this is basically what gesso is you can use it in its own right as like a white chalky paint but literally all I've done is taken a piece of my sponge pop some gesso on and just dabbed it all over to get make sure it was dry okay then we're going to do a couple of bits to it first so I'm going to add I've just picked a couple of scraps of paper just out of my stash at home and I'm literally going to add a couple of bits as a sort of like um, collage underneath it just to add some texture not necessarily anything that I'm going to see much of at the end of it it's just little bits of sort of might just pop through here and there so I've got some that's text and some that's sort of like tickets and I'm tearing the edges so that I've not got no definite edges and we'll go like so all right so I'm just going to pop a bit of wet glue behind those and get those stuck down now you can do this before you gesso if you wish because I'm going to gesso over the top of them again I don't want them to be too visible I just want a hint of detail in the background so again I just went through my scrap stash and just picked a couple of bits that I thought would fit in with the theme and then as I say we're going to pop these into the background by pushing them back with that gesso so I often talk about what I've done and I thought with this one it'll give you an opportunity to see what I've actually done so again I'm just going to pop a little bit of gesso she says a little bit I normally squeeze this and it normally goes everywhere there we go we don't need a lot and I'm just going to use my paintbrush for it and literally push this. I just want a layer over the top. Can you see how it sort of pushes it into the background? So over the edges where it's joining. Yep. And then over the actual piece itself. So I can still see the text on it and the detail, but it's literally taking it into the background. So we'll just bring this up to the same level with the rest of it because it does dry quite quickly. It's got quite a chalky texture again, the, uh, the gesso, and it will dry off with the heat tool as well. Okay, and then I'm just going to pop that in water out of the way. Bring the heat tool up and give that a bit of a blast. Okay, and then we're going to add some colour to it with the chalk paint. So I've gone for that lovely custard yellow this time. So we're going to sort of work in yellow and gold. So again, it, as I say, it dries fairly quickly, this one. And then I'm going to trim those edges because I don't want the bits sticking out off the edge. So you can either use your craft knife. I tend to just literally go around with my scissors and take those spare pieces off the edge there. Okay. 
so that's that bit done so we've actually got a bit of interest going on in the background so then I've got my chalk paint again and this one it's actually called custard and it's the perfect name for it if I undo mm. this one again pop that top out first and just look it is just like oh. custard it's beautiful as mm. I say it's like a mousse texture so again I'm going to use my little applicator this time drag some out of that tub there and then use the edge of the glass tub to just take off any excess and then we're just going to pounce over the top of here I don't want to colour all the paper I want to see just lightly so that I can still see some of that text through it but a bit more heavy where the plain gesso is to bring some colour in and again we're not putting a lot on here so it's not going to take much time for it to dry so just pouncing with that applicator straight over the top now you can do this straight onto the plain MDF but bearing in mind that this is brown obviously you would need to build up more layers to get that sort of texture uh, color coming through from your chalk paint now I would rather use the gesso to build it up and save my gorgeous sort of chalk paints just for that top layer okay again total preference if you want to use two layers of color absolutely fine but you'll find if you just put one layer over the of the mdf it'll be very sort of um, almost looks faded because it's taking in the brown underneath so you'd need to let it dry and then do a second layer now if i was at home i'd probably spend time going around the outside of here as well but just for speed we'll actually leave that as it is there so again make sure there's none round your top here so it's just as I said whoops don't dip it in the pot John just a bit of housekeeping and then your little sponge just clicks back into the top there and you're good to go all right and get rid of the gesso so that I don't lean in that as well because I'm a mucky pop <laughs> I always end up covered in everything hmm. All right, and then we're actually going to come back to those background um, focal background stencils and focal yes. stamps. So I want the stencil out of here again. This one's got a lovely dotty, little uh, all over dotty oh, stencil in it. So again, I'm going to come back. It's the same techniques as what we've been doing all the way through the show. Now, as well as the sparkle texture paste, we've got pearl texture paste as well. So this is a similar product to the green and the Aurora that you've seen me use, but this time it's just a pearl nature without the glitter in. Okay, and this one is new gold. So with the yellow, I thought that one would look really nice. So we're gonna bring that in. And again, I just want some bits here and there. I don't want a lot. I just want sort of suggestions. So again, I'm gonna put a little bit at the top here just drag it through that stencil as I say as if you're buttering your toast in the morning and again if it's not perfect I'm not too worried all right I'm going to run my finger around the edge so that there's no bits off the edge and then we're going to bring a little bit in at the bottom okay and again don't worry if you don't catch all of it that's the intention is it not to be perfect lift it off carefully take any off the edge so that you've got a nice smooth edge and then last little bit because we tend to work in threes we'll just have a little bit on this edge as well and again you're just using such a small amount of that product that those little tubs are going to last you a while pop that extra back in there lift off the stencil and again it's all water based just like the rest of it so this again you know any spare we've got that background building up i'm just going to take that edge off here i'm just running my finger around it to make the edge smooth okay and then what's left on here if there's any product left on it give it a rub through there to use up the uh, the most of it and remember i said you know this one's probably going to end up being something else by the time i finish with some ink on it Again, this will just go under the tap when I get home. I'll put them all, I'll put some soapy water in the bowl when I get home as if I'm going to wash up. Leave them all in there for about 10 minutes or so and then just give them a rub with your finger and they all come good again. So again, as I say, that's what I like about all the um, products being water-based. Mm. 
So again, we'll just have a little clean up on there while that, and I'm going to need to bring the heat tool out again to dry that okay. and hope we can get it dried. And then I'm just going to build up layers again on the top of it to make like a nice little um, home decor piece. So I've got bits, some bits that I've already prepared at home for you and I'll talk you through how I've done those just to add them. Well, I'm always talking about my little box of gubbins, Becky. Yes. Ah, oh, Ben, he's like, what on earth are gubbins? And I know you've all got them. They're just your little box that you pop all those bits in that you think might come in handy one yeah. day. We've got buttons in there and bits of fabric in there and you name it, a bit of everything in yes. there. So I've been and had a rummage in there again. And you saw me do one of these, I think last time I was doing mixed media. This is actually just some inexpensive little wooden frames that I buy in my local pound shop. And I've stuck two together again to make them a little bit more robust. And then we've had a go at uh, doing all sorts to it. Okay. I've got some book paper, paper in the back. I've used the custard matte chalk paint on the base of it. Lovely. And then I've added a little bit of embossing. We've got some terrific embossing powders. I've not <gasps> even had a chance to use oh, these yet. Yes. So I actually used the Satin Sunset, one of Andy Skinner's colours on there, and just used my um, watermark ink pad on here and then added the embossing powder just to give a little bit of extra effect on there. And then in here, I again raided the stash Put some of the wet glue in, so some of your tacky glue into the bottom, drop the pearls into it and then just pop some gold glitter in and left it to dry. All right, so that's literally all that is. There's a little piece, a little picture in the back there. I don't know who she is. She was just lying around again in one of my pots. I don't know. It's not my nan. I don't know who it is. All right, so that's going to be one of the main embellishments that goes on there. I've also made some little paper um, straws. So this again is book paper. And I use, um, I don't know whether I brought it with me or not. I've got a wooden skewer at home. And all I do is start with the book page flat. So if you imagine this is a bigger piece of book page, put the skewer in it and then literally roll it. So if I do it on this piece just to show you, pretend this is the skewer, get it going and then literally roll them up like so. This is a little bit thick. Glue it and seal it and it makes like a little tiny tube. Okay, so again I've cut three of those slightly different sizes. So these are all going to be the embellishments. Okay. I've also found another, I found a little yeah, butterfly just happened to be the right colour. He was sat in one of my uh, paper embellishments. Great. I've got some paper roses, which again, we've all got, you know, drawers and draw bits and paper flowers. And I've got some of that sizal again that we had earlier. Mm -hmm. So this is all embellishment wise. I've got a little metal key. Whoops. Again, that was in there. And then I've got a piece of lace. So you can see we've got proper mixed media going on here. We started with wood. We're introducing metal, the sisal, the paper flowers, the lace. And this is what mixed media is all about. So I'm just going to bring that heat tool in again because I do need this to be dry uh, or as dry as it can be again. Takes, I would say, about 30 minutes again, like the, uh, the sparkle one. If you were leaving it, ideally, you would do this and then go and do something else while it's drying. I do prefer normally this kind of thing to dry by itself, but just helping it on a little bit there so that we can work on top of it. And then I'm going to put the lace right across the middle. Right, we're going to go with that. I don't know whether it's dry or not yet, but we'll go with it. Okay. So right across the middle there, I think we'll put um, tacky glue across the middle, I think. Oops. Just the, oh, there we go. So I'm going to pop that one at an angle. So this is going to be what we're working on. And this is going to go, I think we're just about dry on there. Yep. So I'm going to put some little pieces on the back of here where it's in the... Uh, the middle of the lace and again I'm not worried if it's not stuck down in all places because you can tuck things underneath it as you go along then so I'll just pop some glue on there and we're going to stretch that across the background like so okay how long have we got left 
nine right, minutes. Right, okay. This shouldn't take long to stick together now. And then I'm going to go to the, when I'm sticking the rest of the embellishments on, I normally go for the glue gun. Um, so again, we're going to put that sisal in there. So what I tend to do with that, because it's so open, is pop a couple of blobs on there and then use your glue gun to actually press it into it. Please don't use your finger because that glue is extremely warm. All right, so this again is just building up. So you can't see much of what was going on in the background with that collage. I've got a little bit of writing left here. I've got a little bit left here. It's just adding interest. And then I'm gonna put hot glue. This is my main embellishment, which is gonna go just off center, not quite in the middle. Okay. And then I've made these different sizes. So again, we're gonna pop where the seal is where I've glued them together. We're gonna to pop a little bit of hot glue and these are just gonna run down. In fact, we'll have the wording going the right way, shall we? Let's put it that way. There we go. And then just slightly different sizes. So that one is that way, whoops. And then that one is, as I say, I'm just looking where I've sealed it with the glue to put that face down into the project. So again, just adding a bit of interest. Okay. We're gonna pop some of the roses, not necessarily all of them, but we'll have some of those in the bottom there. Oh, I'm nearly ready for another glue stick. One, two, and again, we'll work in threes there. Okay, we'll put the main butterfly on at the top there. I'm hoping I've got, yep, I'll just pop another glue stick in the end of there and then we're nearly there. And then I've just got some little tiny die cut butterflies that I've cut using one of my um, dies at home. This is one that always stays on my desk as well. So this is just out of scraps of the um, book paper again. Put that one down there. And Lovely. then the little key. Shall we have the key? Hmm. Oh, decisions, decisions. Do you know, if I hadn't have put the pearls in there, I'd have put the key. In fact, I might just stick it on top. I'm going to put the key as if it's the centre of the... Oh, nice idea. ...the butterfly right. like this. I love it. Yep. Yeah. So again, you know, very, That's very fab. quick. But again, just, and then I think, you know, you could either leave this as it is. I'm not sure about the lace yet. I'm going to leave it and see how it grows on me. But if I don't, I shall just trim so. the edges of it. Perfect. Okay. So, so yeah, a bit hour. of everything thrown at that one. That was our fifth <laughs> demo of the show, and now it's your time to vote. So oh, let's grab really, them all really, quick, really shall we? So right. So number reminder. one then was the card at the beginning of the show. So we started off with the chalk paint yep. and the number metallic one. polish. Number one. Then we did the ATC trio. Was number two. All right. Yep. So that was using the. Um, Pixie Sparkles and some of the Aurora texture paste. Number three was the little plaque with the metallic gilding polish again and that 3D embossing folder. Yeah. Number four was my little girl on her scrapbook page using the large stencils and the balloon sentiments. Mm -hmm. And number five, we've just finished with that uh, bit of everything going on on there. Could there have even had a little bit of stamping on it as well. So okay. get on to our Phew. socials and vote for which one you want. You have made so much today. If you do want to recreate that kind of look and design, these are the elements you're going to want to uh, be treating yourself to. So we've got some backgrounds here for you. Your stencils, your focals, 56 elements in total and saving way over £25. We also use the Shimmer Matte Chalk Polish. Now this was in the app and that was £5.75 for you and that's 50 full mil. We've also had it in the custard 
A few people have got your eyes on the custard. Mary says that she's ordered some chalk polish, but she knows now that she needs the custard too. <laughs> Definitely, it's a stunning colour. Low on stock on that one. We've also got the textured paste, and this was the new gold. Please, please, please remember to go on our website um, right this moment um, and grab other colours of these as well if you want to. Now we have the embossing powder. Now this is wonderful. It adds so much dimension. It adds interest to your car your wood and so much more and that one is in the um satin sunset is the collection really nice size pot for just 3.99 you can pay a whole lot more for mixed color um embossing powder so that's a great deal for you today so seize the moment it's now your time to go and check out your baskets Go on, I'll wait for you. Just because um, we have got some of these elements are so low in stock. There was one we had before that was like 60% stock, but that was like over an hour ago. So if, you know, we might have 80% gone, 90% gone, I'm not sure. But I will just say, go and head on over to our website and just look at the colours that you want to give a go. Maybe ones that we've not got around to showing you on screen today um, and seize the moment whilst you can, because as Jan said earlier on, if you're grabbing those cosmic products, you know, Pixie Sparkle, etc., Jan's going to be doing a craft along on the 29th of this month. So you'll have all of your treats by then and you'll be able to craft along in that show because I've always watched craft alongs and gone, oh no, I've not quite got that, all that, all that. So you can't do it, but you can today. So seize those treats. You've just got a head online whilst you can. So please do that. Demo of the show. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Five. Number five. Number oh, we only five. just squeezed it in at the end, didn't we? The little plaque. Yep. yep. Fantastic. What do we think about the lace? I love a bit of lace. Uh, yeah, do you want, does it stay like that why or do, shall I trim it? Why don't you fold it to give me an idea? Yeah. Just that's a good idea, isn't it? Oh, Ooh, it's a tough I one. I think isn't I'm going it? for a fold. Johnny's with me, producer Johnny. Shall, shall we trim it? He's all about the. Right. Yeah, he's all about the. Trim it. This decision made. We're going to trim it. Give you the haircut. There we go. <laughs> Thank Ex you, everyone. Bits for off getting the edge. Those in. Try not to trim the butterfly wings. There we go. Look, just to make oh, it a little bit. Oh, yeah, more. that looks yep. fabulous. Fantastic. Thank you, thank you very so much. much for that, Jan. And thank you all for voting and getting involved. We have got so much more coming up on Creative Cravings for you. Let me just give you a little overview of some of them. The Sara Signature Vintage Diaries we've got, which will go great with some of the 3D products we've been bringing to you in the Shimmer Collection. I've got a Kalal Glue bundle that I know you were using Kalal Glue before. I'm probably not meant to mention this, but there is over 30% off that deal. I'll do it later. Um, so that's coming up for you and your creative cravings. And we've got more makes from you, Jan. Yes, got all sorts lined up again. So all of that is on its way for you. Creative Cravings going to be starting at seven o'clock for your UK team time. Time? Time team. Hmm. Two o'clock ET. I love a bit of time team. Baldrick's <laughs> hilarious. Anyway, that's enough from me. I will be back with you at seven o'clock this evening. Please, please do check out your baskets on any of those cosmic shimmers, all the pixies that we've had today, because some are incredibly low stock and I don't want you missing out. Thanks for joining me. You have been fabulous. I am going to see you at seven o'clock UK time. Bye bye. Make sure you stay with us here on Crafters TV. Coming up, 7 o'clock UK time, 2 o'clock Eastern time, Creative Cravings with Becky and Jan. And it is all about sub box number 36, our theme creator card craft kit. Over 290 elements uh, inside this crafty box. And then, of course, coming up Thursday, a uh, wake up call with Joe and Craig, 12 o'clock UK time, 7 o'clock Eastern, giving you a bit of a heads up as to what's to come here on your Thursday on Crafters TV. Thank you.